Hello, I'm Jamila Masaiva, an international social etiquette consultant and author of etiquette books. In today's video, I'll be talking about dating etiquette, something that was highly requested by a lot of you. We will look at how to choose a venue, what to wear, when to arrive, how to behave at the table, as well as who gets to pay, and finally, how to say goodbyes. There are some etiquette rules, but most of it are just suggestions. Make sure to watch this video until the very end to get the full information on dating etiquette. First things first, when we are going on a date with someone, we have to find where we're going. So that's the most important question. And that will depend on a number of factors. What you like, what your date likes, as well as how familiar you are with your date. When choosing a venue, make sure that whatever you choose is something that both you and your date are going to like. Let's say you are a fan of Japanese food, but you know that your date has never tried Japanese food or doesn't really eat it, then definitely stay away from that choice. Do not book a Japanese restaurant, no matter how you personally like it. Or on the other hand, let's say you've never been to a Moroccan restaurant, but your date you know loves Moroccan food, then do not book Moroccan restaurant just to please the date because you've never been there you've never tried the food and you don't want to try something for the first time on your first date because the first date is very nerve-wracking so don't put extra pressure on yourself in this case scenario the safest bet would be to choose something that both of you have tried before or at least you can choose from the menu something that you can enjoy eating let's say neither of you are a huge fan of Italian cuisine but there is something from the menu that both of you can select in that case, the safest best would be opting for an Italian restaurant where you can find something to enjoy. And the second factor to keep in mind is how familiar you are with your date. Let's say you know the person really, really well. You've been with this person for a really long time and you were just friends before and now you're moving into a romantic stage of a relationship. So it is your first date, but you're not strangers to each other. In that case, you can go for any kind of a creative idea. You can suggest hiking, camping, horseback riding, dancing, going to a different kind of restaurants. It doesn't matter, the choice is up to you. But if you're not familiar with that person, he's a total stranger to you, perhaps you met over a social media platform, let's say you only e-met through Instagram or Facebook, I would suggest in that case, opt for a restaurant that is crowded with people. I know it's going to be loud, but it's gonna be a safer option for both of you. And before going to a date, make sure to share your location with your friends and your family, especially if you're going to a date with someone you have never met in person. Safety comes first. When choosing a venue, an important guideline in making the choice should be your personality and your lifestyle. Let's say you are a very casual person, you enjoy uh, relaxing in a casual atmosphere. Make sure that you book a venue that's also casual. You want to feel like a fish in the ocean. You want to feel very at ease when you're going to that venue. You don't want to restrict yourself, put extra pressure on yourself by trying to behave in a certain way that you're not very accustomed to. First date is important and it's the one that makes the first lasting impression. So you need to feel as free as possible. Also, when choosing the venue, keep in mind the dress code. There are some restaurants that are upscale Michelin star restaurants that require a dinner jacket for men to wear. In that case, if you've booked this restaurant, you would require your date to wear a dinner jacket, for example. Maybe they don't owe a dinner jacket. In that case, they'll have to go shopping specifically for this date to purchase a dinner jacket. You don't want to put that pressure on your date to go that extra mile to go shopping just for the first date. Always make sure that whatever you book is comfortable for both of you. When selecting a venue, make sure that you have been there at least once before and you have tried their service and food in person once. This is to make sure that there aren't going to be any mishaps during the date. If you haven't tried this place in advance, make sure that you go and check it out in person. I guarantee you those website pictures and Instagram pictures of the venue can be very deceiving. You want to take this extra step in order to ensure that your date goes as smoothly as possible. The second important decision to be made is what to wear. And there are several factors that will affect your decision. And that is the venue itself, your relationship or familiarity with the person you're going to meet, as well the time of the day, is it daytime or evening time? And finally, who you are as a person, your personality, 
how you represent yourself on a daily basis out to the world. I'll touch this point a little bit later in this video. If you are the person that have selected the venue, you probably already know the dress code. If you have, please inform the date about the dress code. Let's say if you are the person who gets invited to the venue and doesn't know the dress code and for some reason you're shy to ask your date about the dress code, you can always look it up online. Thankfully, today we have Instagram where we can not just look up only the venue itself, but also look up the location and then see tagged images of real people in that venue. This is something I often do when I'm going out with my family. If I need to know what to wear, I'll go look it up on Instagram in their locations, see what real people are wearing to that venue, and then make up my mind about what to wear. The second factor that will influence your decision on what to wear is your familiarity with the person you're going on a date with. Say this is your friend for a couple of years and now you're getting into this romantic relationship. You can explore your outfits, you can go for something more daring because you know this person. But if you're going on a date with a stranger, I would say try to keep it modest, be more on a conservative side. This is again for safety. The third factor that will influence your choice of wardrobe is the time of the day when your date occurs. Generally speaking, when the sun sets down, we can offer something more fancy, more sparkly, so you can take out your beautiful cocktail dress in the evening as well as with your highest heels. But if you're meeting someone for a lunch date, then you should opt for something that is more quiet, it is more casual, perhaps a business casual would be a good idea. If you arrive at your lunch date wearing really high heels and a super fancy dress, you can make an either pleasant or unpleasant surprise to your date because you'll be either way too dressed up and they are probably not dressed appropriately to your level, therefore you'll make your date feel uncomfortable. You don't want to take your chances, so in that case during lunchtime, please opt for more modesty and more casual look. You can of course dress up for your daytime date as well, but you have to understand the difference between what is acceptable for a daytime date and what is acceptable to wear for an evening date. And the fourth factor that will influence your choice of wardrobe is how you represent yourself on a daily basis out of the world. If you are someone who likes to dress up really glamorously on an everyday basis, this is just how who you are, this is your personality, then feel free to do that for a date as well. If you are someone who is into you know, more sports style, you are more onto edgy part, that's how you represent yourself on a daily basis out of the world, then on your first day, make sure that whatever you wear also speaks to your daily personality as well. You want to look on your date as real, as genuine, as authentic as you are in real life as well. So don't try to be someone else, be yourself, but dress one notch up. Now, when it comes to actually putting down together the pieces that you're going to wear for the first date, make sure that they are fresh, that they are free of stains, that they are well ironed, and they are fitting you. If, for example, you grew taller for some reason or you gained extra weight, make sure to tailor your whatever that you're wearing, your shirt, your pants, your dress, up to your size that you are right now. Do not wear something of your sister or your brother. In case that you do borrow their clothes, make sure that you actually tailor it down to fit your size. If your date is during fall, winter or springtime and perhaps it was raining a lot outdoors, before walking into the venue, make sure to polish your shoes. Shoes are something especially women pay attention to a lot in men. You want to make sure that you walk in to see your date for the first time in really nice and clean shoes. Always carry a shoe polish in your bag or perhaps your jacket so you can quickly polish them before walking in to see your date. Next, we're looking at our total look which includes our hair, our nails. We have to pay attention especially to our hair because this is the first thing people see when they meet us and this is something they'll be looking at for the duration of the date. You want to make sure that your hair is dandruff free, that it is clean, that it is well combed, that you have taken care of your hair prior to seeing your date. How to put your hair depends on how you wear it on a daily basis. If you're someone that likes putting their hair in a ponytail, then do that. This is something you feel comfortable with. If you're someone who always puts their hair down, you can always put it down, perhaps put part in the back like I did and part in the front. Depends on whatever suits you and your personality. 
For young women out there, I also want to encourage you to go minimal with your makeup. You do definitely want to highlight the best features in your face. You want to bring attention, accentuate your strong features, but you don't want to overdo it. So all these great tutorials on baking, contouring, highlighting, you want to keep to minimum or nothing at all. Especially if this is a day during daytime, you don't want to go heavy on contouring, highlights and baking because it will be seen in a daylight and I assure you it's not going to look very nice. When making a choice in the makeup, you should either opt for stronger lips or stronger eyes. What I mean by that, if you decide to go heavier with eyeliner on your eyes, then keep the lip color a little bit more nude, pink, light pink. If you want to go bold with the lip color like a red lip, then tone down on the eyeliner. I would suggest not to do the red lip on a first date because there are some people that really love it, but there are some people that really don't like it, so you don't want to take your chances. The reason I encourage young women out there to do some makeup but not too much of it is because some helps you to look more fresh, it helps you look a little bit different, like you've tried, put extra effort, which is important if you care about the person you're going on a date with, but also not doing it too much because you don't want to look like someone else. You don't want not to look like yourself because the person that your date is meeting for the first time is the person that they would want to meet over and over again. So you want to make sure that your makeup is sustainable over the long run. Another important feature that you need to pay attention to are your nails. This is important for looking well taken care of, well mannered, polished, proper. You want to make sure that your nails are clean, they are well trimmed, that there are no cuticles around your nails, that they are well taken care of, your hands are well moisturized, especially for women, but also for men during winter time and fall time. Pay attention to your hands. This is important for two reasons. First, because most people pay attention to hands and nails. This is just the general statistics of what people notice for the first time when they meet people. But also because for the majority of time, your hands will be visible to your date. You're either going to be talking or eating, or you'll probably place your hands by the wrist at the table and your hands or fingers will be visible to your date. So you want to make sure that they are clean, well trimmed, and they look well taken care of. If you're a lady and you have a nail polish on, make sure that it is fresh and your nails are fully covered in nail polish. No nail polish is better than chip nail polish. If you have a chip nail, make sure to take off all the nail polish and just have clean nails instead of having chipped nail polish. If you have to make the choice of the nail polish, I would suggest to go for nude or pastel colors. You can of course opt for some burgundy color or that range of colors or red nail polish. They're always classical and they look nice. But let's say you are someone who is into art and you love having black nail polish, this is something that you have on a daily basis, then I would say go for it even for the first date because that speaks to your personality, that speaks to who you are. But if you don't have a particular color or the one that speaks to your personality, then I would suggest go for something that is less noticeable but looks fresh and clean at all times. Your choice of shoes and bag will depend eventually on what you decide to wear. So if you're going for a cocktail dress, you can go for high heel, stiletto pumps, closed toe, open toe, depends on the venue that you're going. And then your, again, bag selection will depend on your dress. So currently today I'm wearing this green, emerald green dress. That's a cocktail dress. It has a satin material and I've opted for satin bag in gray color. Uh, I've chosen a gray color because I wanted it to be more neutral so that it doesn't overpower my dress and I've selected this black satin heels that have a little bit of an embellishment on top. I think because I don't have any embellishment on a dress, it just complements and looks really nice with a dress and um, makes it a little bit more fancy. And then I have some earrings that are sparkling that go well with an embellishment on my shoes. So this is how I've selected the look. Perhaps this can be useful in your choice as well. You can make the choice by looking at what I've worn for this video, but also you can go for anything that you feel comfortable in and you think that empowers or makes you feel confident. Now, let's talk about when to arrive to the date. The approximate amount of time that is acceptable to be late is 15 minutes. Again, that depends on a country where you are going on a date uh, for, or perhaps the person, the nationality of that person that you're going on a date with. 
being punctual is very culture specific. In certain cultures, even one minute is too late, in others, one hour is still acceptable. You have to keep in mind the person that you're going on a date with as well as the country that you're in. But usually the acceptable time is 15 minutes. If you're running late for more than 15 minutes, let's say you're stuck in traffic or you can't hail a cab to get to the venue that you're supposed to be at at the moment, then make sure to call your date to let them know. If this is a short notice, you have to call and let them know. If, let's say, you already know a day or two in advance that you will not be able to make it at 7, let's say someone at work scheduled a meeting last minute a day prior to your date, then you know in advance about this delay, then you can let the person know, your date know, either by email or text or via social media, whatever is the means of your communication with that person. You don't want your date to be hanging in there in that venue wondering what has happened to you. No, letting your date know is important so that you can start your relationship on a good note. If you for some reason don't have the number of your date or you've left the home or workplace and you don't have any internet connection and there's no way you can reach out your date, what you could do then is phone the venue, ask them for your date to be called to the phone or ask them to tell your date that you are running late. There's always a way to let the person know that you are running late. That is just good manners. If you are the woman and you have arrived early to the date, what you could do is you could just wait by the bar if there is one at the restaurant or if there is none then you can go and take your seat. Make sure that you take the seat with the best possible view so you can actually see the entire restaurant. If you are a man and you have arrived early, you can either wait for your lady again at the bar and wait for her to greet her um, and then take a seat together or if there are no bars there to be waiting then you can go to the seat but make sure to take the seat that is the one that is viewing the door so whenever she walks in you can stand up and greet her if you arrive together with your date then a host or a hostess will be greeting you at the restaurant and will be leading you to your seat if that's the case if there's a hostess then the woman will go after her and then after the woman the man will proceed if there is no hostess, it's just you and your date going up to your seat, then first goes the man and then goes the lady. If the man wants to help you to get seated, please accept this gesture gracefully, just simply smile and let him help you get seated. In that case, the man will arrive and have the chair from his right side, pull out the chair, allow the lady to walk in and then gently push the chair inwards to adjust the seating distance between the lady and the table. For the ladies, when the chair is being pulled out for you, make sure not to take the seat immediately. Remain standing slightly bent at your knees and then allow the man to push in the chair and then take the seat. The most frequently asked question is, what do I do with my phone and my bag? With a bag, a clutch like this, you could either place it behind the chair like that or you could also place it on your lap and then cover it with a napkin. The most frequently broken etiquette rule is when people place their phone with a screen upward like that on the table. Actually, food is the only thing that is allowed to be at the table. So phones, sunglasses and bags do not belong on the table. What you have to do is put your phone on silent and then you would put it away either in your bag or your dinner jacket. In case that you have an emergency call, you're expecting a call from a client or perhaps someone from a family, you can let your date know you're expecting an emergency call and you would like to leave your phone on the table but make sure that when you do so, you leave with a screen facing downwards like that. When you get that emergency call, make sure that you stand up, leave the table and then take the call. Do not answer the call at the table. The next important question is who makes the order and how will we let the waiter know that we're ready to make the order. In order to do so, you would take the napkin and unfold it below the table and place it on your lap. Once you have done so, you indicate to the waiter that you're ready to make the order. By the way, if you want to polish up your dinner manners, you have to watch my dinner etiquette video. So make sure to check it out before you go on a date. Now, after you've placed the napkin on your lap, you're ready to make the order. And who makes the order? That depends on who was the inviting party. If let's say you were the inviting party, you invited your date, then you are the person who has to make the order. 
if it was your date, your partner who organized the date, then he is in charge of actually making the order. If it's him, then you'll have to say what you want to order to him first, and then he'll tell it to the waiter. Whoever is the inviting party is the person that decides the price range of the meals to be ordered. So you would wait for the person who has invited you for a date to say what they would like to eat. And if their price range written on the menu, you will know what you're looking at in terms of numbers. Say your date is ordering a steak that's worth, let's say, $40. Then you know that you have a price range of $30 to $40 that you can order your meal. If, for example, your uh, date ordered a salad for $20, do not order a salmon that is $60 because the rule is generally is that, that the person who is inviting the other person to a date is the person who is going to cover the bill. So you don't want to put extra pressure by ordering something much more expensive than they have intended to order. Same goes, if your date has not ordered any dessert, do not order a dessert unless they tell you something like, I don't really like sweets, but please feel free to order anything that you like from the dessert menu. If they give you an encouragement to order dessert, even if they're not having one, then you can do so. But otherwise, if it's not stated clearly, then do not order dessert if they haven't ordered one. Please do let your date know about your allergic reactions that are lethal detrimental to your health. Say you have a lethal allergic reaction to calamari and your, your date just ordered uh, calamari that are very much fried and they've lost that original shape so to speak and you didn't know that these were calamari and you've tried them. Please do let them know in advance so you can avoid any kind of unpleasant situation at the table. However, with that being said, please make sure not to talk about dieting or diet plans that you're on right now, gaining or losing weight. Please make sure to stay away from this discussion on the first date. When eating the food, make sure that your pace of eating, consuming the food is pretty much the same as your dates. Let's say if you're a slow eater and your date eats at a regular pace, then you want to speed up your eating pace. If you are a fast eater, then you would want to slow down because you don't want to find your dish completely empty while your partner or your date is still working on it. Same applies if you are someone who has takes a long time to eat, you don't want to see them having finished their meal and you're still on your very first meal. Make sure that you watch the pace of your eating and match it to that of your partners. Also, this might be just my suggestion, this is not an etiquette rule, but it's important to keep in mind not to come to a date for the first time feeling absolutely hungry, almost starving. If you are going on a date, make sure to have something a little bit so that you can quench your hunger. And then when you're coming to the dinner, you're actually there to enjoy the company of another person and not just to fill up your stomach. Also, when eating your meal, make sure that you leave something on your plate, especially on the first date, because you don't want to signal to your date that you actually came here feeling completely hungry and hence finished the entire meal. Though this is very culturally different from country to country, in India, for example, leaving something on your plate might be considered wasteful, whereas in China, finishing everything up might be considered that you were really, really hungry and that your host didn't feed you enough or your date didn't order enough. So you have to be mindful of different cultures, but the general standard, so to speak, etiquette rule when it comes to finishing the meal is to leave something on your plate when you are in the West for a date. Also, a suggestion would be to avoid ordering something that you have never tried before or something that requests a lot of the work in terms of the cutlery and mastery of the cutlery or dishes that contain a lot of greens because they can get stuck in your teeth and that's not a good impression to have on a first date. For example, if you have never tried eating pasta with only a fork, do not order pasta for your first date. First, practice eating pasta with just a fork and then you can order it for the date. A crucial element when it comes to a first date is the body language. This will tell you whether or not the person is attracted to you or not. You can read little signs here and there to understand what's going on. I've actually done a video called Signs of Attraction, so if you haven't seen it, make sure to check it out. I'll link it down here in the description box. Again, some of these signs can be very subtle, others can be almost screaming at your face, but the general signs of attractions when the person is leaning forward, when they are gazing into your eyes, when they are smiling a lot, when they have open body posture, 
All these indicate that the person is interested in you. If you're a man, I would suggest do not risk touching your date on the very first date, particularly if this is someone that you have never met before and this is your first time meeting in person. This includes trying to grab her hand or perhaps lightly touch her arm. Do not do that. This can make your date feel uncomfortable and throw them off. I would suggest to leave the touches for the second date. When having a conversation with your date, please make sure to stay away from topics of religion, politics, money, health. You don't want to talk about it on a first date, especially if you don't know the person. Again, you don't know their life. You don't know what has happened to them. So you might unintentionally hurt their feelings if you get into any of these sensitive topics. Some safe conversation topics are about movies, books, uh, places that you've visited or places that you've recently discovered in the city that you live, both of you live. So these are safe topics to talk about. And when talking, make sure that this is a dialogue and not a monologue. Analog, so do not take over the entire conversation. When asking questions, you want to ask open-ended questions that cannot be answered with yes or no. Yes and no questions are closed-ended, meaning that once you answer yes or no, the conversation ends. You want to say questions like, you want to ask questions like what, why, how, when, that will encourage the date to talk more. Be mindful, however, when asking the questions, this is not an interview, so you're not there to find answers to that particular questions. The question should be constructed in a way where you want to discover who this person is in front of you. You want to show your genuine interest in who they are. And actually, studies have shown that people love talking about themselves. So if you want the person to feel loved, to feel appreciated, ask them questions about them. When they talk about themselves, they'll feel a lot happier and therefore they'll associate that feeling of happiness with you. Do you know how we actually fall in love with someone? We fall in love with the feeling of who we are when we are next to that person. So it's truly generally about us, how we feel around that person. And in order to feel loved or to feel content about ourselves, we have to show up as ourselves and allow them to feel like themselves as well. The more genuine we are and we allow that person to feel genuine around us, the more chemistry we'll have. With that being said, please do not come to the first date pretending to be someone that you are not. What I mean by that, if you are a jazz lover at heart, do not pretend to be a huge fan of rock. Of course, you can over time get to appreciate rock or be a huge rock fan, but if you're not a rock fan on the day one, please do not pretend that you are one. Because when you show up on the first date, pretending to be someone that you're not, you will have to spend the rest of the years together pretending to be that someone that you were not on the first date. Show up as your genuine self. Because at the end of the day, when this relationship evolves into something more serious, you will every day wake up pretending to be someone else. And you'll hate this relationship for very wrong reasons. Not because you're not with the right person, but because you are not the right person when you're next to that person. Now that our first date is coming to an end, it's time to pay the bill. So who has to pay the bill? The general etiquette rule is that the inviting party is the one that has to pay the bill. But again, we don't make any assumptions. We don't assume that the inviting party will be paying. Once the bill arrives at the table, what we do is we observe the body language of the person. If they immediately take out their card to pay, then we know they're the inviting party and they will be covering the bill. If it takes them some time to pull out the card, then we know perhaps they're waiting for us to say something. In that case, we can offer to split the bill. When you have made that offer, your date has a choice, either to accept it graciously or to decline it politely. If you're the inviting party and you intend to pay the bill, I would suggest to do it so discreetly. You'd arrive at the restaurant a little bit earlier, leave your card by the cashier and ask them to charge this card for the bill. So when the dinner is over, there's no hassle of calculation. When leaving the restaurant, you can approach the bar, make the payment and then leave. Now it's time to say goodbye. How do we say goodbye? Do we peck on a cheek? Do we give a hug? Do we go for a handshake? Do we just wave? What do we do? And to answer this question, it depends on the formality of your interaction with your date. 
Has this person ever been in your close proximity before? That means the person has been in your personal space before. Again, if this is your friend that you're starting a romantic relationship, you can always opt for a hug because you've probably already been to each other's close proximity. A hug is acceptable. Let's say you're total strangers to each other and this was the first time that you met, then perhaps a handshake or a wave would be nice. Again, this will depend on what you feel comfortable doing. There are no strict etiquette rules regarding saying goodbyes. You have to trust your gut and know what you have to do at that moment. However, if you're a man, I would suggest that you wait for the woman to make the first move in terms of the goodbye. If you see she's going for a hug, then you can accept a hug. If you see that she's stretching her hand for a handshake, then you stretch yours for a handshake as well. I would also suggest to end the date before you've had enough of that person for the first time. There always has to be this lingering desire to see that person again. Again, this is not a strict rule, it is just a suggestion from my part. Once the official date is over, the one that you have agreed to come, your date say offers to go somewhere else. Let's say they suggest let's go and have coffee at my place or let's go and have coffee at another bar that I have seen somewhere close by. If you don't feel comfortable accepting that offer, then firmly state no with a smile. You can just say no, thank you. Never end your negative statements on a high pitch note. Do not say no, thank you. In that sense, the person that's offering might seem like you're not sure, perhaps you do want, maybe it's not a complete no. Make sure that your no is firm but with a smile. If you do not intend on seeing the person ever again, you can just say, no, thank you. It was lovely meeting you. In that sense, the person will understand that it's a firm no and you had a great time meeting that person. There is no promise of seeing that person again. If in that case scenario, again, you just don't want to go on to have coffee with that person, but you really enjoy the date and you might give it a chance to see this person again. What you can say again is, no, thank you, but I would love to do this again, or I would love to see you again. That way you have said no to the offer that you don't want to agree on, and then you've given the promise of seeing that person again. Whatever you do, do not give false promises, do not lead on. The first date is just a chance for you to meet the person in person for the first time, or perhaps meet the person you've known for many years in a new light, in a new stage, in a new format. No obligations at all. No one owes you anything after the first date and you don't owe anything to anyone after the first date. Just take it simply. It was just a first date. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I hope that you found this information useful and applicable in your daily lives. Please do let me know down in the comment section below what were some of the interesting tips that you've learned or rules perhaps that you knew before. Please do share your opinion, I highly value it. And also do let me know what are some other topics that you would like me to film more videos about and I'll be more than happy to do that for you. And finally, I would like to thank Vintage Castro Bar here in Baku for allowing to shoot our video in this very beautiful venue. If you're ever in Baku, make sure to visit this place. It is very beautiful, very trendy, very chic, has an amazing cuisine. This is my favorite hangout spot with my girlfriends. So if you're ever in Baku, make sure to visit. I will see you in my next video. Bye!